In the search for the fundamental unifying theory of quantum gravity, one of the key questions is, how should space-time be described at very small length scales, as small as the Planck scale of 10 to the minus 35 meters? Should space-time be described as a continuous manifold, as general relativity would suggest, or should space-time be described as a discrete structure, as maybe quantum theory would indicate? Now, in the quantum gravity community, there are entrenched camps on both sides of this question. And both have good arguments. Now, the message in this new paper is that both may be right. Space-time could be simultaneously continuous and discrete in mathematically exactly the same way that information can be simultaneously continuous and discrete. The fact that information can be simultaneously continuous and discrete is at the heart of information theory. And the corresponding mathematics is in use everywhere in modern signal processing and communication engineering. For example, a continuous signal such as a music signal might be completely determined by its amplitudes at discrete points. Continuous information, of course, has to possess some special property if it is to be equivalent to discrete information. And that special property is band limitation. In this case here, it means that the music signal cannot have any wavelengths smaller than some finite minimum wavelength. In this case, the continuous signal is then completely determined everywhere from any set of amplitude samples which have been taken at an average spacing that is at most half of the minimum wavelength. Now concerning physics, it has been shown in previous work that physical fields may well possess band limitation, namely in the form of a natural ultraviolet cutoff at the Planck scale. Here, in the new paper, it is explicitly shown that not only fields over space-time can be covariantly band-limited, but also space-time itself could be covariantly band-limited, and therefore simultaneously continuous and discrete. This provides a set of new methods, of new mathematical tools that could be of interest for anyone working in the field of quantum gravity. For example, Discrete theories of quantum gravity could be given continuous representations, for example, to study the limit of how a continuous manifold would arise. But also, continuous theories of quantum gravity could be given discrete representations, for example, for the purpose of numerical work. However, apart from new mathematical tools, apart from new technical tools, is there any new physical insight gained? Well, it turns out that in this new framework, curvature acquires an additional interpretation. Curvature can now also be viewed as being a local modulation of the density of degrees of freedom in space-time. This means that the Einstein action, being the integral over the Ricci scalar, is actually simply the integral over the density of degrees of freedom and therefore, in a finite volume, uh, it is just the overall number of degrees of freedom. The fact that the Einstein action can actually be reformulated in information theoretic terms in this way, I think is yet another indication that perhaps all the laws of nature can be reformulated in information theoretic terms. And maybe they should all be formulated in information theoretic terms in order to make progress. After all, there are extreme circumstances, for example in Planck scale physics, where the traditional notions, such as a distance or a time interval or a mass, lose operational meaning. In those circumstances, we don't even know how we could measure them in principle. And yet, 
even in these extreme conditions, it is always possible to quantify how much information goes into a process and how much information comes out of a process. Therefore, in this sense, it would appear that the notion of a bit or of a qubit is more robust and therefore perhaps more fundamental than the traditional notions such as um, a length or a mass or a time. Maybe the unit of a bit is more fundamental than the unit of a meter or of a kilogram or of a second. Well, what are the open questions then? So far, this work has been done only for scalar fields that live on spacetimes that have Euclidean signatures. The study of Lorentzian signature spacetimes and interacting theories with fermions is still really only at the very beginning. And this means that there is still so much interesting work to be done.